Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 141 for Wednesday, March 15th, 2017. Fingerprint sensor modifications. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by Blue Apron, the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. See what's on the menu this week and get three meals free with your first purchase and free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash arena. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. That fingerprint sensor, the one I have on the back of this phone here, is great for quickly unlocking my device, I feel. Uh, but did you know that you can do other cool things with it, too? On the Pixel devices, for example, a new feature allows users to swipe down on the sensor to pull down the notification shade. You swipe up, and you send it back. Pretty neat. Well, guess what? There are apps that let you get in on that action as well, even if you don't have that function built into your phone. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that not all hardware OEMs follow Google's fingerprint API uh, to a T. So your mileage may vary depending on the device that you have in hand. But let's take a look at a few apps that unleash the fingerprint sensor hounds in this week's roundup. So let's start things off with an app that gives control over fingerprint actions while keeping things relatively simple along the way. The source code can actually uh, be found on GitHub for you developer types if you want to get in on it there. Fingerprint Quick Action is a free ad-supported app that has some additional support for root users, which I'll get to in a second. But first, uh, when you grant the app accessibility permissions, you're allowed to set up a single tap function for when you just tap your finger on your fingerprint sensor. What action takes place when you quickly tap that finger there? Well, the standards are listed. Uh, things from like going home to your home screen to showing the power menu to taking a screenshot and also things like kicking you into split screen mode if your phone supports that. You can isolate these to only enrolled fingerprints as well for extra security if you need to. In the experimental category here, you see fingerprint quick action also gives the ability to customize actions for a fast swipe. That's mimicking what you get on the Pixel phone. Uh, you could, for example, program a swipe down to pull down the notification shade. There's another experimental function for double tap if you want to expand the action capabilities of the sensor even further. And that tap interval is adjustable so you can make sure that you get it just right. Non-root users can adjust settings that keep the app from being killed by the system, as well as a blacklist of apps that will temporarily pause that functionality when you're inside those apps. But if you're rooted, you can force exposed mode, which gives the app even further capabilities under the hood to keep everything running smoother. And that is that. Fingerprint Quick Action is completely free in the Play Store right now. Next up, a way to expand the functionality of your fingerprint sensor with a bit of extra design flair. Fingerprint Gestures offers an impressive list of functions and actions for your sensor once it's active. You'll know it's active when this notification appears in your notification pane. Here in Settings, I can assign actions for single taps, also double taps, and swipes. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, but tapping in any one of those functions, I'm shown the depth at which I can assign those actions to functions on the device in a very nice visual design. You'll also notice a few extras assigned to root users only, things like launching into assistant or taking a screenshot. You can also scroll up or scroll down, which could be nice if assigned to the swipe, for example. Now, up top is this icon touch panel. This is a little bit different. Think of this as a shortcut pane. If I assign the tap action to this one, and then we'll head to my home screen and I'll tap the fingerprint sensor to show it off. I'm shown this three by three grid. Now I can tap and hold on any one of those icons and that'll allow me to assign a function to that part of the grid. The graphical icon from the settings that you saw earlier appears within that box now every time I perform that action. There's profile support in settings that allows me to assign the current settings to a loadable profile at will and some advanced settings to dial in the double tap delay speed and 
to require registered fingerprints in order to work for security. And finally, there's this setting to tell the app if your phone is using Google's fingerprint API or if you happen to be on a Samsung device that does things a little differently. That's going to make this even more supported than some of the other apps. Fingerprint Gestures is free, but you can pay $1.49 for the premium version, which removes the ads from the experience. Find Fingerprint Gestures in the Play Store now. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode, and that is Blue Apron. It's time to get hungry. Blue Apron is the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country, and it's delicious. Blue Apron's mission is to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone. Uh, Blue Apron actually delivers seasonal recipes along with fresh, high-quality ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals for less than $10 per person. And every meal comes with a step-by-step, easy-to-follow recipe card, as well as pre-portioned ingredients that you, you can prepare in 40 minutes or less. Not all ingredients are created equal, so it's important to know where your food is coming from. And Blue Apron sets the highest quality standards for their community of over 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranchers across the U.S. Seafood is sourced sustainably. Beef, chicken, and pork come from responsibly raised animals. Produce is sourced from farms that practice regenerative farming. And by shipping the exact amount of every ingredient required for a recipe, Blue Apron is helping to reduce food waste. You use it all in these recipes. Their freshness guarantee promises that every ingredient in your delivery arrives ready to cook or they will make it right. Blue Apron delivers to 99% of the continental U.S. There's no weekly commitment, so you'll only get deliveries when you actually want them. And you can customize your recipes every week based on your own dietary preferences. You can choose from a variety of new recipes every week, or you can even let Blue Apron's culinary team surprise you and make those picks for you. Recipes are not repeated within a year, so you'll never get bored. So you can get uh, dishes like salmon piccata with orzo and broccoli. There's pork chops and miso butter with bok choy and marinated apple, uh, vegetable chili and baked sweet potatoes with crispy tortilla strips, and spicy shrimp coconut curry with cabbage and rice. So you want to check out this week's menu, and when you do, you'll get three meals free with your first purchase and free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash arena. You're going to love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. Don't wait. Go to blueapron.com slash arena to check it out for yourself. Blue Apron is a better way to cook. All right, let's get right back to it with a few more fingerprint sensor apps. This next one is an excellent addition to any modern Samsung Galaxy device. Samsung Galaxy phones have a lot going for them. One thing that has always bugged me personally is that the home button is a physical on-screen button, meaning every time I want to go to the home screen, I have to actually push the physical button in instead of just tapping it, like I'm already tapping, you know, everything else on the device's screen. So let's take a look at Easy Home. It's a relatively simple app optimized for Samsung devices that allows you to mess around with how that home button fingerprint sensor combo operates. But in order to do it right, you're going to need to go into the app settings first and turn off battery optimization for the app. Otherwise, Samsung software will end up killing the service and make it kind of unpredictable in its operation. The free version allows you to program just the single short touch action of the app. You just tap the action in the settings to assign any number of functions to that single tap uh, from acting as the home key to, say, locking the phone to opening the camera. Uh, the power menu, notification shade, and more. I'd assign it to home key, though. That's kind of what this is all about. You can also assign a blacklist of apps where this function will not work. For a $1.49 in-app purchase, you can upgrade to the Pro version, which gives access to a longer touch setting for multiple functions. You can also activate sound feedback for when actions are performed to get that kind of audible noise kicking back at you. It's a great way to help you take your Samsung device into your own hands. Find Easy Home in the Play Store right now. In the archives of smartphone history, there was a time when phones would often include an extra hardware button into the design. That button had a single purpose, to emulate the longtime standard that was a hardware camera button. We had them on digital cameras, so it made perfect sense to have them on smartphones for smartphone cameras. But then manufacturers phased them out. They were somewhat unnecessary in a touchscreen world, it seemed. Yet sometimes they are super helpful when you can't see the screen while you're taking a picture. This is Dactyl Fingerprint Camera. It's a simple, single-purpose app 
that works with a huge list of supported camera apps, including the stock camera, of course, on most phones. Once you enable the required accessibility permissions, you'll see a list of installed camera apps that are supported, along with camera apps that are supported but not yet installed from the Play Store if you need to go shopping. And to be fair, this right here is the tiny list of unsupported camera apps, so you're likely covered. Now, I'll launch my stock camera app with Dactyl running. And when I do, you can see that quick little message down below that says Dactyl is in fact running. Now I can simply tap the fingerprint sensor once with my finger and with each tap, a picture is going to be taken. Kind of like magic, really. Dactyl has a low footprint and does exactly what you expect it to do, which is my favorite thing of all. Find Dactyl in the Play Store for $1.99 right now. I really should thank Ron Richards from All About Android for that last app, Dactyl. He shared it on All About Android months ago, and it's become a super useful tool in my belt ever since. Send me your favorite apps and categories to arena at twit.tv. You can post those to the subreddit, androidapparena.reddit.com. Uh, the recorded show plays every Wednesday around 5 p.m. Pacific, following tech news today at twit.tv slash live. And new episodes appear later in the evening in the feeds and on the show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell. I'll see you next week in the arena.